We are an island people with a history which can be traced hundreds of thousands of years to the beginning of mankind. Many waves of migration over thousands of years have shaped our rich and diverse culture. We are a combination of East and West now, a blending of indigenous and colonial ideas. And we are also travelers, explorers who have crossed oceans and made new homes far from our Filipino roots. this land are not new. Our people have been seeking shelter on these shores for almost 100 years. When somebody asked me the question, why did I move to New Zealand in the first place? Because there's a lot of mountain bike trails. Oh, wow. New Zealand has got all these amazing trails that are free to use. You don't have to pay the entry to see the, the geysers. Coming from a country such as the Philippines, where we have to pay thousands of pesos to have access to the beaches, here in New Zealand, it's free for all. Owaki pays and Aussie Owaki pays. <laughs> of course, the Philippines might be the most beautiful country in the world, but it's not necessarily the safest place to, to live as well. I'd lost count of how many times I've been burglared or probably pickpocketed or probably seen somebody shot in front of me. It's quite dark and it's not a nice thing to talk about. Just like any migrant who has got a family, they would like to provide this better future for their kids. In my case, I'd like to be able to provide that better future for my son, who was 12 at the time, when we moved to New Zealand. So New Zealand, I saw as an opportunity to be able to not only have a safe environment, but be the person who I am. hanging out and I have to be at training. First, like, I kind of feel like, oh, I'm missing out. But then when I finally, like, nail a skill in gymnastics that I've been working towards or I just see myself making progress, it's such a good feeling because you can see that your hard work's paying off. And it's just, like, a satisfying feeling for me. The view is this nice here. You see the gym from here? My family relocated to New Zealand when I was about three years old, I think, just to look for a better lifestyle. I was born in the Philippines. It's basically for the children. We thought it would be good for them to have different opportunities. It's safer, relatively safer, less people. It's just living in a place where you don't worry much about, you know, pollution, overpopulation, and things like that. And we had a thinking that if things didn't work out, we could always, you know, move back to the Philippines. Have a little warm up, a little stretch. Then maybe we'll do a bit of tramp and we'll begin on floor. Okay. Sports is a big thing with the family, obviously. It's a way to train one's personality and, and fitness as well. Kenzo was exposed to gymnastics when we celebrated his first birthday in the Philippines. It's what you call a, like a kid's gym themed party. That's where he started off. So 
like you're waiting to get to the handstand and then you want to like push up towards way too late. I met Kenzo when he was pretty young. He must have been about five, six years old. Little guy came into the North Harbour Gymnastics Stadium. He started off in the recreational program. I kind of saw a bit of talent there and uh, yeah, sort of gave him the opportunity to come over and try some competitive gymnastics. We are seekers of opportunity. More than 10 million Filipinos have left behind the densely populated cities of our homeland to make our fortune in all corners of the earth. First impression of New Zealand was cows and sheep. I thought I was gonna live in a farm because my parents bought me a ticket to New Zealand. Being Filipino means that you're being well fed. If you go to a Filipino party, our first question would be, it's not how are you, it's always, kumain ka na ba? Kumain ka na ba means, have you eaten? There was a time in my life that I grew up in my grandmother's house. So they weren't that wealthy, but they had to feed me, my sister, and my cousins. At some point, I realized, oh, why is the food there always soup, soup, soup? But I think it's the way to bulk up the food. I started hating it because I was just always eating pork bone soup, chicken bone soup. Now, I just find it comforting, like when I'm at home, to be honest. That's what I like to eat. I grew up in the Philippines in the Makati, one of the busiest cities in Manila. I would always create things, like random things when I was young. So, and my favorite toy when I was young was actually those Legos. And then because of that, I actually wanted to become an architect. But yeah, just, I like expressing myself through art. But now it could be to drawing or food. So pretty much I just want to, you know, express something through creativity. My friends during high school, they would play basketball and stuff, but me, I don't like getting sweaty, so I just like staying in the classroom. Growing up, I think I've always been coined as the black sheep in the family, because I was always in trouble in school, universities. I've always wanted to become an architect, but things didn't really work out because I got kicked out of university during my first year. My parents would be disappointed in the Philippines having a son who get kicked out. It's something to be ashamed of. That's why the last resort was them sending me to New Zealand. Though our DNA is transwoven from thousands of years of movement across oceans, it was the arrival of the Spanish ships that marked the biggest shift in our culture. Old beliefs were replaced with new, and an intrinsic part of our culture identity was born. That struggle of establishing my identity as an individual, as a daughter, as a Filipino, has been a challenge all throughout my life. I grew up not knowing who my parents were. I was told that uh, my father died at a plane accident and my mother left for the United States. And I was being looked after by my auntie. So I felt I was really abandoned. I felt I was neglected and loved. The Philippines is predominantly Catholic. Growing up, you know, going to a very strict Catholic girls' school, where it seemed like everybody else's family and parents were perfect. Being labeled as a bastard child, I actually only had one friend throughout primary, 
secondary school. I think it's just an, a kilometer loop. It's okay. just a short loop, yeah. That is around, one so. difference that I have made when I moved to New Zealand. Back in the Philippines, I would probably be very, very traditional in my approach to practicing my faith. But when I moved to New Zealand, that's when I learned that I don't have to necessarily follow A, B, C, D, E to be able to express my faith. I see a lot of good human beings around here who don't necessarily follow A, B, C, D, E. I've maintained my faith, but not necessarily in the same way that I've learned to express that faith. Tell me what you eat, and I'll tell you who you are. Some say food is the best way to truly understand a culture. So this one is, um, it's a tattoo I got when I was working in an Apache because they like Vietnamese herbs. So this is the main things I always use for cooking. So lemongrass, coriander, mint, kaffir lime leaves, Vietnamese mint. This one was I was working at Mr. Go. This is food that we use in that restaurant. Star anise, um, mango flower, just for mango, calamansi, Filipino citrus, Thai basil, cinnamon leaves, Szechuan peppercorns in the bottom. This one's lion because I just like lion. Before I moved to New Zealand, I searched modern Asian restaurants in Wellington, and then I even researched one of the chefs who opened Dragonfly and Chow. When I had the interview with him, I was like, oh, I'm good, I'm good, I'm a good chef. But when I work with him, I realized I wasn't. He asked me to cut the squid, to cut the pineapple the Asian way, and I couldn't do it. That day after, I went to the grocery store. So I bought like three kilos of squid, the five heads of pineapple, and then I was just practicing it at home. So for me, the next day, I can show him, look, I can do it now. But as a result, I was eating pineapple and squid for the next two weeks. <laughs> so now we're making our char suey mee goreng. So we have this beautiful pork, which is marinated from char suey for two days. And then after marinating it, we cook it very slow for 12 hours. I'm amazed how I put a lot of time to dishes for a small detail. Pork dumpling to put something up to the customer that they will devour. They will just eat in a matter of minutes. And on the background, we actually spend like six hours to do one plate. So Peking Duck, this is, I think this is our signature in Master Kong. So it just takes a lot of flavor there. When we do Peking Duck, we have to butcher it. We have to air dry it. We marinate it. We have to chill it in the fridge for two days. After that, we cook it. So it's like three days process. Three days, we make a lot of three days and then it's just gone in one day. <laughs> That's a labor of love there. There's some artists who make something through art. Person as a chef, we can make something unique, something creative through food. Like for me, my creative process is like, I'm trying to bring back my memories, like important memories of me through food. As migrants, we are ambassadors for our people, seizing opportunities and establishing the trail that others may blaze. The most challenging thing I face in a gymnastics competition is the nerves. In the moments when I see the crowd, my heart kind of just drops. I get really, really nervous. But then when I'm on the competition floor, it kind of just all goes away and I just focus on what I'm doing.
Failure in gymnastics is, is a very common thing. You know, when you come to training, you'll fail multiple times. Every day you're gonna fall. It might even hurt yourself sometimes, but the thing I love about that is you have to pick yourself up and keep trying and trying and trying and trying again. Like with anything, in order to be successful at it, you have to sort of have a passion for it. Talent is something that you're born with and we can all appreciate talent, but I personally really respect people who work their butts off at training and, you know, want to do something with that talent. These medals here, one, two, three, and four, these were from the 2019 New Zealand Nationals. And those are like special to me because I performed very well in that specific competition. I actually ended up winning in my level. And these were the gold medals I won. And these ones here, the ones with the red, were from Texas. When I went to Dallas, Texas in 2019. These are probably my biggest medals and most, um, most important medals that I have. The competition was called the Valeri Lucan Invitational, and it was just a competition with around 16 countries there from all over the world. And that was very special because that was my first ever international competition. It was very like surreal to me because the arena that we were competing at was gigantic. It was like, I've never competed in an arena as big as that one. There was probably like six different gyms in that one arena where like there's six like different competitions going on at the same time. Um, my most prized trophy would probably be this one. This one goes with these medals from the Valeri Lucan Invitational in Dallas, Texas. Like this was the trophy I got as the all-around champion. That was probably the most meaningful to me because being the all-around champion is like the main kind of accomplishment. Putting on the silver friend was like, it was quite emotional because this was what I was like working towards like my whole life basically, competing for New Zealand. I eventually want to reach like the Olympics or like the Commonwealth Games. That's the ultimate and like the pinnacle goal. Our history is complex and woven from many strands. Perhaps it is this history which has given us an ability to embrace the culture of our new land. So what are the Filipino foods when you said that you all shared them with Kai? Because you, you know you got to make us up a batch of some of the food that you're, you're famous for, because we haven't never been in the Philippines. In April 2019, uh, we were running a Māori leadership program for New Zealand Post, and it was the first one, so it was our first season that we call it. OK, for you, you want to learn the words, because when your whānau comes, even if you're third row on the wing, you're the only one they see. Because they've never done a Māori leadership program, we said, oh, well, bring somebody from your L&D team to come in and they will have to be a participant and be involved. And Mary Rose was that person, so we met her at the orientation and she was there from the beginning to the end, learning what our Māori leaders were going through uh, and implementing them, those values in with her own leadership style. The Tehononga program has helped me see a lot of similarities between the Maori culture and the Filipino culture, particularly in the area of the community, the collective mindset, and as well as the fun. The Philippines and New Zealand have experienced similar, you know, history in terms of being colonized. Another similarity as well is, of course, our love for Kai. You know, we, whenever we come together, it seems to be always at the center of, you know, any gathering. But one particular learning in their Te Hononga program was when Michael asked us to write our Wairua statement. And, you know, not every day that we are able to, you know, define, you know, how we'd like to be able to make a difference in the lives of our whanu, our community. It was through that process where I was able to define the work that I'm doing in the Filipino community. So I said, I love the outdoors. 
why don't I use that outdoors to connect people, not just with one another, but back to our roots? So came Pinoy Adventures. Um, kia ora, mabuhay. Good morning, everybody. And thank you for coming and welcome to Pinoy Adventures, New Zealand. It started with about eight people. Now 1,700 with about 600 um, joining our events. Of course, you know, we've taken it to the next level and refined the purpose and the purpose of which is uh, to connect with the Filipino culture through the New Zealand outdoors. As a Filipino people, we are not necessarily into the outdoors. We would probably stay indoors in the air-conditioned malls and everything. All right, let's go. Yeah. So what I'm trying to do is to encourage as many Filipinos to get from their PJs to their tramping gear get from the couch to the mountain bike saddle or the bike saddle and just experience the true benefits of nature in as far as their mental well-being is concerned. The person who does not know how to look back at where they came from will never get to their destination. Though we are far from our homeland, we keep our feet firmly rooted in our heritage. And we're done. Bless us, O oh Lord, thy gifts which we are about to receive from thine bounty. To Christ our Lord, amen. amen. Let's eat. I really think I got the Asian fusion from my mom. It's a hit or miss because she likes creating things. Like there's a dish in the Philippines. It's called sinigang. Basically, it's a pork belly with tamarind. There's another dish, tinola. It's chicken and ginger. But one time, she tried to combine those dishes together, and she was so proud of it. Like, hey, look, I combined two dishes together. It's my own recipe of sinigang. <laughs> Me and my family tried it. It wasn't that good, to be honest. But that's where the idea that came from, the fusion. Table 32, one chicken, one pork, and John fire me one pad thai and one char sui. 53. I saw the memories on my Facebook just today. Eight years ago, I actually posted on my Facebook. Someday, I will put Filipino cuisine on the map. <laughs> my goal in life, and I know I'll get there, I want to have my own restaurant. I want to share what Filipino food is. I want to share what our culture. So. At some point, I know that I'm not doing this for myself. I'm doing it for my cuisine and my culture. Coming here to New Zealand, my husband and I were very conscious that we are not going to lose our Filipino heritage and culture. And that's why when we moved here, like we really were intentional in speaking to our children in our language here at home so we would like them to be able to communicate when we go back to the Philippines. I know that if my family had stayed in the Philippines, our lives would be like completely different. I'm not even sure if I'd like still be doing gymnastics. But I still identify as a Filipino even though I live in New Zealand. Has anyone heard of the word koru? Literal translation is budding fern. Budding fern, so it um, represents new beginnings, new life. So that's why I wear this. This is also a koru. A lot of Filipinos are generally you know, very positive people, happy. There's a lot of laughter. And seeing that in others, multiplied by hundreds that go through Pinoy adventures has reinforced that positivity in me. I may be a Kiwi and a New Zealand citizen, but you know, deep in my heart, I am still a Filipino, you know, true and true. I may be able to change my passport. I may be able to change my citizenship, but I cannot change who I am. And I am proud to be a Filipino, and I'm proud to be able to connect with my fellow Filipinos and, you know, be an advocate for the Filipino migrants here in New Zealand. Even though we are far from the islands of our forefathers, we still hold on to the Filipino value of Bayanihan. This is the spirit of camaraderie.
To support each other and to share the burden as one big fanau is an intrinsic part of our identity. As Filipinos and now as Kiwis. We honor our roots and the sacrifices that have been made to bring us here by living good lives. And we stand on the shoulders of those who have come before us. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.